What's up, y'all, and welcome into the Jack Vita Show. I'm your host, Jack Vita, and today we are going to be starting a new series where we will be recapping the episodes of the hit show on Peacock, The Traders, Season 2. So joining us, hopefully for every episode, although she may have to miss a couple, maybe we'll bring in some backups for her, but my regular co-host, Stephanie LaGrosa Kendrick from Season 1 of The Traders. Stephanie, we're back. Welcome back to the Jack Vita Show. Thanks for having me, Jack. It's good to be back. It's great to have you back. Season 2. It's season this, two. This is exciting. It's really good. It's actually really good. I'm really enjoying it. My kids are really enjoying it. My husband's enjoying it. I'm excited to talk about it. We're happy when Kyle is happy. So yeah. So everybody's happy when Kyle's happy. Thank God <laughs> Kyle's happy. <laughs> okay. So we're going to today. We're actually just to let you guys in on a little inside knowledge on taping this. We're actually taping. This right here is our recap of episodes one through three, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go and we're going to watch episode four, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about episode four. So right. we have a limited amount of time. We're condensing this a little bit. There's so much in episode one, especially. I kind of wish they had dropped one of these at a time. I mean, for the, for the viewers, it's great because we get to, you know, feast and watch a few of these, but right. for us... I wish we could split this up and do one episode at a time. Unfortunately, because of that, we're going to condense this episode a little bit. So we're going to move quickly. Let's start first things first. Season two of The Traders. We're back, Stephanie. Okay. We've got a cast of all celebrities. Did you mm -hmm. like the change of this format? I like it. Yeah. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I don't even know who half of them are. So, I mean... <laughs> Even once they said their names, it took me so about episode three to be like, oh, okay, that one's that one, and that one's that one. Because I don't, I mean, I don't watch all these things. I didn't even know Michael Jordan had a son. And my son is like, oh my God, he looks just like him. He's my favorite. He better not get murdered. He better, and then he's crying when he gets murdered. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I like that it's all celebrities. I also like that our cast had half and half. Um, so, you know. It's a good cast. It's a great cast. Like you, I'm not too familiar with a lot of these Bravo Universe people. Yeah, I don't watch all that. So I'm familiar with the reality TV competitors. I'm learning. So. Yeah, I mean, I know the gamers. It's cracking me up. They call them the gamers, but yeah. I know who the gamers are. But I'm dying. Like, who was it? I don't remember what episode it was. Janelle was like explaining to somebody who Johnny Bananas was. And the guy was like, Bananas? Who was it, Kevin? Yeah. Who was she saying to? Kevin. And he, he's like bananas. Like Johnny Bananas. That's his name. He was on the challenge. She's like, what challenge? The show? The challenge? <laughs> <laughs> Dying because that was me with three, like back on snake in the grass. Three trying to explain to me, like, oh, Janelle and Rachel, they were on Big Brother and they were on this and they won that. And I'm like, who? What? Because I mean, I don't, I didn't up until that point watch all these reality shows. <laughs> so You're many still, get, still getting into some of it i mean i'm still learning way. yeah even the challenge <laughs> i started watching that i'm like who's this bananas guy i'm with you kevin um <laughs> he's one of my favorites actually <laughs> kevin or bananas 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 i like kevin i mean he's just he's just funny to watch getting made fun of actually but <laughs> poor guy <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so obviously you're in this reality TV world. I'm in it in a different way. I wasn't on a show, but I know a good amount of you guys and friends with a good amount of you guys. So, you know, there's some people that we've either met or we know on this season. Who are you most excited to see in this cast? When you saw the cast was announced and you didn't know, you hadn't watched the show, who are you most excited to see? I mean, 100% hands down, Sandra. I mean, she's she is a bad... ASS um, <laughs> from Survivor. You can say that. That's PG rated. Oh, I'm allowed to. As long as in trouble yeah. for my mouth. Okay. <laughs> and um, she, she's just so real, down to earth. Um, not trying to be the pretty girl out there. She's just there to play the game, like the ultimate gamer. So I'm excited to see her. You know, plus I know her from Survivor and way back. I'm excited to see my girl Janelle. 
um, who I didn't know much about until I was on Snake in the Grass, and we be, we've you know become very good friends. Love her. We have a lot in common. Mom of three, hard worker, and she's just another badass gamer. Um, part of day I don't know well, but I got to give a shout out to my fellow Survivor girl. Uh, who's played the game quite a few times and you know I'm pulling for her even though I've heard good and bad things about her I don't know her personally she never done anything to me so I'm watching it all play out and I think she's doing an all right job even though apparently she's not real life on this show uh bananas kills me I like love him he is so freaking funny uh he needs to be on the you show had never forever. met bananas before right did you meet him no. at hearts of reality last year no 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 and he's just hysterical. Um, a lot of these Bravo girls, I wasn't like a huge fan of and I didn't know who they were. Um, I'm liking Phaedra though. She's she's starting to really like win me over a little bit, even though I think she's playing a similar game to another good friend of mine. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I really like CT. CT, I don't know him at all, but I really like him. I'm really pulling for him. So those are my top five, or did I say six? Sorry. Yeah, not about five. I wasn't keeping track. I'm. It's funny you mentioned bananas. I remember thinking about because I didn't get into the challenge until maybe five years ago. So I was late in. A, I was late on the challenge, but I've become um, a challenge fan. I really like. I'm it. like this year. I'm like in the past year. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when I discovered Johnny <clears throat> Bananas a while ago. Um, and then just kind of talking to you and knowing that the show was coming out, I was like, I feel like Stephanie and bananas would be good friends. Like he's from the same area as you. I think he's a New Jersey guy. Oh, um, is he really? See, I don't I even know that. He went to Penn state and okay. he, uh, yeah. And he's Italian and he's just, I feel like, yeah, he, he'd be one of our people. I feel like I haven't met he's him. He's hysterical. Yet, but... uh, well, I need to get on a challenge with bananas. Then. We need to team <laughs> up. That's it. That's it. Done. Philly girl, come on. <laughs> okay, I got my top five here. Um, these are five people when I saw this cast was announced that I was most excited to see. Number one, Janelle goes without speaking. She's been yeah. on this show. I don't know her as well as you do, but I have met her a couple times. She's great, and she's a, a legend. She is a big brother legend. Yeah. She's an icon. She's confrontational. Yeah. She's great TV. Number two, not too far behind Janelle, is Dan Giesling. Now, I know that you had not seen Dan on Big Brother. Dan is a little bit of like a Boston Rob type of player. Like he okay. likes to be in control. He's very mm -hmm. cutthroat. Okay. Gets, the thing with Dan, though, is he honestly, I feel like he overplays his hand a little bit. So it's like he kind of puts himself in positions where he's got to kind of dig himself out of a hole because he got a little too he's, aggressive. Yeah, he's starting to worry me because he's very similar to Cody to me like he looks too obvious almost the fact that they haven't gotten him yet i guess it's just like us it took us what six episodes to get cody even though we knew i knew from day one i barely even knew the guy that he was a traitor um <laughs> he seems similar to that the dan guy but dan seems like he'd be like really good at big brother yeah and i think the thing is for me like watching him i, I think he makes good tv he makes the show yeah 100 percent He's very strategic. He's it's like he I think he overthinks things a little bit sometimes. Like, I think it's like, you know, he's talking about in one of the episodes how he's going to go for the shield. And if he goes for the shield, then everyone's going to think he's not a traitor. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I think you might be overthinking this a little bit. But he he verbalizes and narrates what he's doing and explains it very well. He does. And makes it very interesting. Like he he's kind of like Rob in terms of you're watching the show and he kind of feels like he's your buddy and he's talking to you. Oh, 100 percent. And he's got good ideas. I mean, he's definitely the leader of the pack in that, you know, traitors circle right there. He's Paul. Number he's three. Making all the shots. Sorry, again. Oh, you're good. Number three, Sandra. You mentioned it. I mean, Queen stays queen, two time winner, a survivor. Um, and everyone I have not met Sandra. Everyone talks about how wonderful she is as a person, how much fun she's, she is. Yeah, she's a great person makes great tv it's no wonder why she does such a good she does so well on these shows i think she yep. could have a sandra type run on this show even though she's not a traitor 100 percent. number four you mentioned johnny bananas <laughs> uh, i have bananas as number four the reason why is because 
I see bananas a lot. He was just on Heroes versus Villains. Like I don't see him personally, but I see him on TV a lot. So some of these right. other people, like like Dan, I hadn't seen Dan on a show in like twelve years. Sandra hasn't played Survivor, or she hasn't done anything other than Survivor. Bananas a little more seasoned, but he's a ham. He knows how to make good TV. So he was up there for me as number four. Number five is someone that you did not mention and hasn't gotten too much screen time, but has gotten some. She's always bringing the drama, and that's Trishel from The Real World and The Challenge. Trishel. So I'm looking at her, and I'm like, how do we, she looks so familiar. Now, I did not watch her seasons of The Challenge, so I never saw her on there, but I feel like I remember her and CT from The Real World. I mean, that's like what? The original. Is that, is that yeah, like, like 20 years pre ago. That's like pre-Survivor times, I think. Yes. <laughs> The real world start first season of the real world was like 1992 or 1993. Like the real world is older than I am. Yeah. Like I think, I mean, <laughs> I know I, at 92, I mean, I was young then, so I don't even think I was watching reality TV. Um, I think real world was like one of the originals and then survivor. So it's like, what, when were they on? Because they're not, they can't be older than me. When were they on the real world? Uh, I think CT was on like 2003 or 2002 and Trishel was probably around that time. I think Trishel was on Vegas. And All right. So that's, that's, that's when I was still in college. Like I was just graduating. So yeah, but they were like sense. CT might be like, it's possible that they're younger than you because they would put people who were like 18, 19. On yeah, no, I sometimes. remember that, but that was more of like a show of, partying and they lived in a house i can't really remember exactly but it wasn't like a competition show that much was right. it yeah. yeah no no competition it was more just yeah. showing people how they live yeah. and it's yeah. it a great show though it's really fun to yeah. watch on paramount yeah. plus okay right. still I got, on. okay i got four Here's surprises show. of kind of like the four people that have surprised me so far that i've been like mm -hmm. wow i'm really enjoying one mm -hmm. is actually CT because on the challenge, you're either a Bananas fan or a CT fan. And I've always been a Bananas fan. I feel like mm -hmm. on the most recent seasons of uh, the challenge, I think CT's kind of mailed it in a little bit. Like mm -hmm. you, he's done it like 20 times. Like you can only do it so much. And I feel like he's kind of, you know, I think his kind of energy and passion and enthusiasm on the challenge hasn't quite been as high as it once was when he was this huge character. And I think he's really bringing it here on the traders. I've been loving CT on here. I think he's great. I mean, again, I'm not a huge challenge person. I've only watched it a few times, but I think he's doing a great job. And I think he's just starting to come out now. Like I'm really into his own and his personality on the traders. Number two, Deontay Wilder. Wilder. He is one of the, I mean, he's an all time great boxer, fantastic boxer. He's really intense. He's taken this game really seriously, which is a little different from one Ryan Lochte who was on last season where I feel like he was kind of like, hey, you know, this is fun. I'm here for the ride. But I don't think right. Ryan was that locked into the game. No, I mean, one of them didn't watch the traders at all. I thought no, Ryan, Ryan never watched anything. <laughs> didn't even watch the three episodes they sent us like to watch. So I feel like somebody on the season is still that Kevin. Like, Kevin doesn't really know what's going on. He's just like, whatever, happy to be there. But then Deontay <laughs> seems just like, he seems like, I don't know if he had a tough upbringing or what he had, but he seems like he's taking things really to heart. And he seems like he has a really good heart. But, I mean, in a lot of these games, sometimes you got to cut people's throats and it sucks and you don't want to, but it's a game. And he does not seem like he's going to be lasting very long. Like he seems like he is not thick skinned enough for this type of a cutthroat show. Sadly. He's good TV though. He's been good TV. I've enjoyed it. Oh, hundred percent. His personality. Yeah. And yeah. obviously he's like a workhorse. Like he's a guy you want to keep around from the challenges for sure. He, if anybody takes him out of the show, he's going to take himself out of the show. Cause it's going to be a mental thing. <laughs> Two more people that have uh, intrigued me, surprised me, who weren't quite on my radar. Larsa Pippen. I mean, she's coming oh, out. Yeah. She seems like she's uh, identified Dan pretty early on. Like, she's on to Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Her and the other girl that was on the show with Reza. What's that called? Shaz and Sunset. What's her name? MJ. They are on it. Larsa and MJ are on it. Uh, and she's good TV. She's drama as well. I have They're never seen her yeah. on no. I've never seen her on anything before. And then last one, the guy who I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about uh, today is 
Peter from The Bachelor. Now, I have not met Peter. Oh, yeah. But he's uh he was on the same season as Garrett Powell, who comes on this show a lot. Garrett's friends with him. He told me Peter's a really good guy. Peter's got a little bit of like an Ari type situation where yeah. he didn't have a great reputation from his time on The Bachelor. He's not super popular within that world. But a lot of people who actually know him have said, oh, no, he's actually a really good guy. He's a really nice guy. And I think he's got an opportunity here for maybe a little bit of a redemption arc because I think Ari really um, got a lot of people who are haters uh, to mm -hmm. become fans of his after last season. I feel like The Bachelor's a tough show to make everybody a fan of yours. I mean, you're dating yeah. how many girls at once and you're only picking one. And you hope you make the right choice. Uh, the Peter guy seems like a nice guy. And yes, Ari definitely won over some hearts being on the traders and I think redeemed himself. Peter's playing. He's doing some interesting strategy stuff. He's like, we got to fake a fight. We'll talk about that a little later. Oh, yeah, um, he's like buddies with Kevin, isn't he? Yeah, he? yeah. How do they know each other? Kevin's like an actor. I, 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 I don't think they knew each other before. I think they just made friends on the show. Oh, um, okay. All right. Hmm. So I got my notes here from episode one. Um, okay, let's go. I think we let's should get to it. Yeah. I think first, the next thing we should address, Steph, is there are some changes to the format and just mm -hmm. overall changes as a show. Mm -hmm. um, you played season one. Thoughts on, you want to explain a couple things that you're noticing right away. Okay, that's different. Would be really interesting if maybe things were like that when we were in the house or just go ahead and uh, differences from season one to season two. I mean, first off, you know, season one, you're the guinea pigs. Uh, you look at Survivor season one and then two all the way up. They're constantly making improvements. They're constantly changing things. Um, so it's it's expected. Um, the biggest thing for me is the three shields. I mean, that's like a game changer. If we had the opportunity to get three shields, I mean, forget it. We had the opportunity for one shield. There was so much like strategy talk. Like if you went and had the opportunity to get the shield, don't tell anybody you got the shield. You'll all be safe. Like it was completely ridiculous. It was a good idea, but it was ridiculous. And this is like you get the shields in front of everybody. They see the shields. Um, so that's a game changer right there in a good and a bad way. You can get all the shields and look selfish, kind of like Janelle, or you can get the shields when you absolutely need it, or you can not go for the shields and you can hope that you stay safe. So there's a lot of ways you can look at that. That's the first thing. The second thing is the two traders off the bat, um, which they don't tell them how many traders. So you can tell that's like confusing, but then they recruit a trader. And then, you know, I'm guessing once they get a trader, then another trader comes in and the constant recruitment of traders, that changes the dynamic of the game and gives the traders an even bigger, you know, leg up. Um, the house is nicer. It looks, they have really pretty flowers. They're getting way more alcohol than we got, which is like <laughs> ridiculous. Um, the challenges look better. The tower work looks better. Yeah. Alan's more polished, <laughs> but Alan was really good on ours. Um, but that's just the nature of the beast. I mean, that's just how it is. It's yeah, as it I, progresses, the show's going to grow. I think the gameplay is very interesting. The shields make things. I mean, Bam was just texting us a minute ago. Bam, of course, from your season, season one. Mm -hmm. uh, Bam was saying that he's like, you know, I would be going for the shields all the time. And then if I yeah. get the shield, I'd be calling people out at the round table right away. He said he would have, he just texted us and said he would call out Cody on, day one if day one because that, you're, that's another thing like you're afraid to be the loud mouth like larsa is starting to be the loud mouth and i don't know if that's going to work out well for her because you know it's just when you're the loud mouth you act as a shield for the traders but then you can also get banished very easily because you look like a traitor so it's it's a very fine line he says that but as soon as you don't get a shield he might be the next to go so he better hope he gets a shield every time damn i love you to death by the way <laughs> so you know? would you have gone for the shield i mean and also not, i should mention no not no. not early on not like you now. learned uh -uh. your lesson from survivor palau jumping off the boat <laughs> that yeah i did that i was the girl like oh i can i can get the first immunity necklace are you kidding me not only could i not because i went the opposite way and the carrot was really strong and the boat is much faster swimmer than i am but you you put a target on your back. Janelle has a huge target on her back. Yeah, it's interesting because Janelle's basically making the decision that she's going to have to keep 
that strategy going every time because there might be an approach of okay well now janelle is not immune and we don't want her to be like even if they don't think that janelle's a traitor it's like janelle's always going to take the shields and She's i would like to get a shield for myself right because i need one right I mean, I like her strategy and it might work, but she's putting herself out there and they're already talking. They're already like, you know, you know, she's a big time threat. She's very well liked. That, you know, works against you a lot of times. You got to kind of stay under the radar. So <clears throat> we get the uh, traders, which uh, Alan picks Dan and Phaedra. Dan, I was not surprised by. Phaedra, I was not familiar with before. And then they get the the opportunity to pick the third traitor. When you found out that they would have this power, is there someone that you thought that immediately they would try to pick? I, exactly who he said, Sandra, Parvati, or Janelle. Maybe even CT. But CT would have been too obvious, I think. So I think they made the perfect choice because now... Parvati becomes a shield for them if people start suspecting Parvati. Um, and they don't care about throwing Parvati under the bus. At least they seem like they don't, Phaedra and Dan. Um, and then Parvati's got balls, man. As much as people don't like her, she does. She's ballsy. She will look you in the face and say, I love you, and cut your throat the next <laughs> second. And she has no qualms about it. So she is the perfect choice i think i think you would have done a good job too and i think sandra would have done a good job as well i think another thing that you see a little bit of in this early part of the game with dan in terms of who is he picking for another trader and then who is he eliminating these are similar things that dan did on his last his last season of big brother he played they had a season where it was coaches and him and janelle were coaches on the season and later mm -hmm. to enter the game as players Dan picked all women for his team and I, he targeted bananas right away. I think he likes to have, uh, he likes to work with women. And I think he also wants to have uh, people that will kind of go along with him that he feels will, he can have the control. I think that's what and, you're seeing. And that of. to me is so obvious. And that's where I kind of deep down know Janelle knows Dan's a traitor and she probably is hopeful he's going to keep her safe on the inside and vice versa. Sounds like a sim similar story to season one with Stephanie and Sari. <laughs> I don't know. But just from playing the game and being kind of in that position, if I had to guess, I think that's what's going on there. Yeah, Which is not a I bad think... strategy because that's what you do in these games. Listen, you team up with people until you can't anymore. And then somebody's got to act. Hopefully you're acting first. So to your point of why he picked Sand uh, Parvati, I think Janelle would, he would not have been able to railroad Janelle and get Janelle to go along with whatever. I think you're seeing it early on that Parvati will go along with what Dan is kind of his ideas and stuff like that. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Janelle wouldn't have gone along with it. And I also think knowing Dan, the way he plays, Dan's tr Dan wants the first place prize. He doesn't want to share this with anybody. So. Right. I think he would have a much tougher time if he brought Janelle on, which I do think like you're talking about I th Janelle and Dan, I believe they know each other very well. They were on a season okay. of Big Brother together 12 years ago. Okay. Um, so they've just known like each other a long Suri time. and I. It's so funny. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But just because very you've known each so. other a, a long time doesn't mean you talk every day. They may not even have known each other were even going to be on the show together. You know what I mean? Because like, you don't like say, oh, let me call people that I was on a reality show 12 years ago with, or if they even have their information or find them on social media and hopes they're going to be on it. Because then you look shady. Like, what if they don't want to keep up with you? You know, sometimes you got to get, it's like CT and that Trish Hell. Like, didn't they like, and now they're slowly forming like a bond on there, it seems. Retrusting each other again. Yeah. And I think that like we're talking about with those connections, you know, maybe there is a good friendship there. Maybe there isn't. But like with for whatever reason, Sari did not want to bring you on as a trader. And I think she was probably I think part of it. I don't know. We haven't really talked about it with her. But I think part of it is that she wanted that first place prize. And I think it would have been much harder for her to cut you out of that pot. A hundred percent. 
same thing. She was not splitting it with anybody, no matter what. And she is going to say, because I said I didn't want to be a traitor because I was the snake on Snake in the Grass and I am not a good liar. And I made that very known. But if she was smart, she would have brought me on and used me as a shield and let me cut my own throat if I really wasn't going to do that good of a job of being a traitor. Um, but having her and a built-in alliance, and if she would have brought me on, I, I probably would have went to the end with her, and she was not splitting that money with anybody, as we saw. Yeah, and I think that's Dan is probably approaching things a little similar. Yes. I think he'd yes. have a harder time cutting Janelle out of that than Parvati if he feels that he can. And it sounds like before there was already a little bit of suspicion and Parvati maybe not having the greatest relationships in the yeah in the castle so which you know you're in these games and you're in it to win it i get that but at the same time there comes a point you can't be greedy so like that's a great strategy to have and it worked out for three but sometimes greed doesn't work out so that strategy for dan i can always bet you it's not gonna work out like he almost might be better off bringing somebody in that would never be suspected kind of like a Janelle that's going to have his back no matter what, and then just splitting with her at the end. But, I mean, that's just my thought process. Suri won, so it worked out for her. But Yeah, and a difference between Dan and Suri is Suri is not, she doesn't play this kind of, like, I'm going to be in the driver's seat at all times. No, I think no. She's, she's a little under more the radar. Subtle. She's agreeing with everybody. She's friends, literally, exactly what Phaedra said. She had a one-liner in there. It was the words, and I need to find the clip. It may have been in an interview. It may not even have been in the show. It, it was, was verbatim from Suri's mouth. The way that Phaedra is playing this game. And it works. Because then you're not, like, out there. It works. Dan wants to be the puppet master. You're seeing that. I watched the after show where there's a little bit of inside. Uh, they give you a little bit of an inside scoop of why they made some of the murders. Right. And Phaedra basically says that she didn't want to kill bananas. Dan did. She went along with it. Yeah. Uh, she didn't sound like she wanted to kill Marcus Jordan. She went along with it. That's what Dan's doing. Um, yeah. So let's let's talk about these first couple of murders. Bananas. Oh, my gosh. We're so disappointed that you went so early, Johnny. So disappointing. And like everybody's disappointed. Like that's brutal. Because he's one of the best personalities that you could have on the show. Um they should have got rid of that politician guy first. <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty surprising. Uh, I mean, Johnny Bananas, he does, he has gone out early on the challenge a few times, similar to like what would happen with, you know, Boston Rob plays Survivor a lot. He gets targeted because he's an icon and yeah. that's happened with Johnny a little bit, but we're used to Johnny at least making it till the middle of the season. And I thought he was going to be a fixture on this show. He and I get what, the mood and it's so fun. He, he does. And I get Dan's strategy for taking him out. Like, you got to get him out of here while you can. He didn't have a shield. Now's your chance. Um, but man, from a viewer standpoint, people are disappointed. Yeah. Disappointed. Would and then who was. To have him. Uh, oh, yeah. Have him on here. Yeah. He'd be a riot. Oh, no. I was going to say, I would have loved to have him stay on there longer. What were you going to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> who, who went next? Uh, Marcus Jordan. Marcus Jordan. That's a huge problem when you go on a show as a couple. I mean, that's like an immediate built-in alliance. So one of them had to go. I don't know. What was their strategy for getting rid of Marcus? That was like... They said they sa it sounded like Marcus was kind of onto them, too. Like, or at least he was onto Dan. And Marcus uh, kind of reminds me, like, this early boot of Marcus feels a little bit like when Bam got booted. I think B Bam was murdered second it was just and there was like, no wait, rhyme or reason to it what? yes yes that's exactly what it was yeah but it's kind of interesting because it does make the girlfriend larsa look a little suspicious now even though she would never murder her boyfriend maybe she would to mix it you know i mean there's so many like your mind is going crazy in that in that yeah. castle so you cannot it's so hard to figure it out like what they're thinking whoever they are you know that's uh, right so marcus goes next Poor Mark. And my son was really upset about that. That was like his favorite. Oh, man. 
<laughs> Junior was like, no, no, Marcus, I'm not watching anymore. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. He's a big fan. Is he a big MJ fan? I guess so. I guess <laughs> so. And he thinks he looks just like him. And I'm like, I don't see it. I don't think they look anything alike. I don't know. <laughs> I see a little bit of it, but not a lot. I mean, I see a little bit, but like, I guess because he wears those glasses and Michael Jordan didn't wear glasses. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, I think going back to bananas real quick, I thought he would have made a great trader. I actually, I was when I watched the first episode with my sister, she's like, I bet bananas is going to be a trader. He'd be a good trader. Well, and I was hoping, I was hoping they'd bring him on. Yeah. yeah. That's why he wasn't. Cause everybody, he'd be like the perfect trader. He'd be like, such, I mean, Phaedra is the least suspected trainer. Yeah. I mean, th th they're not even going to figure that out if they tried. They're going to need some help. <laughs> Through these first three episodes, do you think Phaedra is playing the best game of the three traders? Uh, yeah, because she's the least obvious. That's, that's the only reason. I mean, you would think Parvati could be a trainer. You would think Dan would be a trainer. So, yeah. So we also have had, let's see. So we've had two murders and then uh, we'll come back to this, the murder in plain sight in episode three. Okay. Um, we've also had, uh, I think, two banishments up to this point. So Peppermint goes out. I think Peppermint is the first person that got banished. And then mm -hmm. the next one was Max. Um Peppermint, they were kind of building this up like some kind of riff there with Tr Trishel. And that's where I, you know, I love Trishel. Trishel brings the drama. She's confrontational. Yeah. She's great. She is. And also, um, and this this happened on my season, Peppermint slips up and kind of alludes to that she's a traitor, but she didn't mean it. And, and it's easy to do because you're so badly trying to prove that you're a faithful and you're like, as a trader, I mean, as a faithful, like you can just easily. So um, someone on my season did that and I caught them. And I don't know if it ever even aired, but I was like, oh my God, she's totally a traitor. She totally slipped and she kept slipping. And that's apparently what Peppermint kept doing. Um, so, I think it was Shelby because Michael Shelby. posted that. Yeah, shout yes. out to Michael. Yeah, Michael. And Michael remembers it. And a lot of people were there and remember it. And then she started calling me a traitor, which made her even more suspicious. And it's all in how you handle being called a traitor. Like, if you get super defensive, then if somebody calls you a traitor, you do look like a traitor because you're getting so defensive. And I think if you're just, like, seriously, you're, you're very off base. Like, you're wrong. And if you play it cool, kind of like Parvati did in the very beginning, um, it works in your favor. But Peppermint just got real nervous and was trying to defend herself. And, you know, she kind of cut her own throat. And then Max, too. Max is like playing this cool guy type of game, um, walking around. Like every time you turn around, he's kind of like Christian. Like he, 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 he's over here. Then he's over here. Then he's over here. They tell him, you want to sit with us? We're having dinner. He's like, no. Then he goes in the other room. Like he looks like he's like a nervous mess. So he kind of looks like an obvious traitor would be and that's very easy to be that way because the castle is the whole time you're in there you're just you're a wreck like i was not a traitor and the whole time i was a nervous mess i mean ari kept saying to me i just can't read you you're like you're stressing me out and i'm like because i'm stressed out because we can't figure this out so like those nervous vibes were a lot of problem for people so that's really interesting what do you think of this strategy of Peter where him and Kevin are sitting down. I was laughing at this. I thought it was funny when he's like, we gotta, we gotta fake some tension between us. Yeah. And We're then they vote, vote for each, each other. other. Yeah. Is this like genius or silly? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because what we did is we all went with the numbers because nobody wanted to be an outcast. And kind of what season two is doing is a couple of people will go with the numbers and then a couple of people will throw out a random, like, I know that you're not a traitor, Peter, but I'm just going to put your name down because I don't know who is, which makes no sense because that's a wasted vote to me. At least try to go with somebody that you might think and get some numbers there. So those two are just trying to, I don't even know, <laughs> cause like <laughs> chaos. It's something Kate would do. 
<laughs> just, 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 you know what? I'm just annoyed. I'm just gonna, you know, just I'm gonna write your name down. Let's 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 start finding some people. It's kind of a good idea, I guess, because if they are aligned, no one will suspect it. I think what they're trying to do, like what you're talking about, is actually something that has happened a lot on the challenge, where people don't want to. They don't want to be deciding votes, so they do what they call a burn vote, where it's like, okay, yeah. I'm going to vote for this person because it's not going to count. That person's right. not going to get thrown in. They don't want right. to get blood on their hands. So this is the ultimate <laughs> burn vote of like, hey, bro, I'm voting for you. I don't want to put my, I don't want to target anybody else and then have right. them come after me. I think that's what the hardest strategy right. is. Right, but that's what's like making Dan look suspicious because Dan won't call anybody out. So it's like already against you too. So you mentioned that you see some similarities between him and Cody. Can you please elaborate on that? Um, he just, he won't throw any names out. Um, what I mean is Cody seemed very obvious, like from day one. Yeah. And Dan seems very obvious. He's very quiet. And then he goes into the whole spiel of, well, I'm not going to just throw a name out just to throw a name out. Like once I know for sure, then I'm going to throw a name out. Well, Cody kind of was similar in a way like that too. And it was funny because every name he threw out happened to not be a traitor. And then he still acted kind of nervous. So the common denominator was, okay, you're a traitor. You're not going to throw another traitor's name out. And you act very nervous and quiet at times. And then at challenges, Cody was very like normal and himself because he like couldn't let his guard down. And I don't know Dan personally, but he seems kind of similar to Cody in that way. Plus, knowing that Janelle's a faithful, and if she and Co if she and Dan do know each other that well, I think Janelle knows that he's a traitor, and she's just not saying it yet. She's hoping he will keep her safe on the inside. Yeah, I would really be curious the next time you talk to Janelle. I would love to find out if. Dan truly is an introvert if he always comes off as an introvert or like if I love to know is this because he's saying I'm an introvert I'm an introvert I never really yeah. got that vibe from watching him before but I've only I've never met him before so I'd love to know yeah. if he truly is introverted or if he's acting and I weird. don't know I don't I never even watched his, his show when he was on but he doesn't seem so introverted in all his you know confessionals he's very extroverted <laughs> so yeah yeah. How about uh, we got Janelle? Janelle's no no fool. I guarantee you, she knows very early on that he's a traitor. We got a confrontation between Janelle and Larsa. Like this is the stuff we we're loving so far. Is the drama? People are really okay. confrontational. That yeah. was good. It it came up again in the uh, man. What do you call that? Is it the round table? What do you? I I always want to call it. The That's the round table. It reminds me of The Apprentice. <laughs> that's that's the round table and it actually if you look up it's like a chapel it looks like a chapel with oh. like vaulted ceilings and stained glass windows and it's gorgeous in there and it's freezing cold and they do play a weird song when you go in that makes you even more nervous than normal um larsa went after poverty first like early on right after he picked the traders and now she's going after janelle so larsa has got like no problem just calling people out left and right <laughs> but i mean in. she's she's kind of barking up the wrong tree in parv's words because poverty's got no problem going right back at you and same thing with janelle so it's, this is gonna be like a serious cat fight here you got a shout out in this third episode too i did my mom was not happy my name was on a grave. <laughs> my my name was on a tombstone my kids were like oh my god Yep, I guess because I got murdered. I'm still in the traitor cemetery. That's where <laughs> I that's where I will lie. It was an amazing Easter egg. You and Ryan Lochte, the graves. Like I love these extra touches that they're putting on this show. It's so detailed. The editing I think is much tighter. The camera work is better, like oh, we're talking yeah. about. Definitely. But I want to know, like, for you watching it, I mean, were you pretty surprised, first of all, to see your name on a gravestone? I was and second. What I mean, what's that feeling like? Is it creepy? Is it funny? Is it what? What? What do you think? 
I mean, I laughed. I thought it was funny, but I mean, we did just we did just have I did just have two brothers pass away in the past couple of years. So my parents are not real happy about it after burying two of their sons. And now you're watching a show I was on and you see your daughter's name on a gravestone. Um, I thought it was funny. The funniest part, my kids were watching and they were they were banging on the graves to get money and to find the uh, the shields. And Sloan, the five year old was like, Mommy, when are they going to open yours up? <laughs> and they only showed it the first time and they never showed it again. So I guess they never buried anything in mine. So listen, it's an honor. They gave me a shout out, murdered and all. They only murdered me because they knew I was on them at that point. I completely had to figure it out, but whatever, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have more to talk about with that, uh, Sari. And you and uh, Janelle. It was Cri and Dan. Christian. Christian is really the, got rid of me because he knew I knew it was him. Anyway, that's a story we'll, for another day. We'll be, yeah, we'll be exploring more of that as we cover yeah. the show. Uh, we only yeah. got a few more minutes here. So, um, lastly, I think the best where we should end on this episode is what we had the cliffhanger on, which was we're going to have a murder in plain sight. This I was like, how is that going to happen? That is so bizarre. And like, how does nobody see them in this library looking through books and finding a chalice in a book? I think, yeah. uh, I mean, people are walking by when Dan and Parvati are in there like discussing, all right, you take the chalice, I'm gonna find the book, you figure out who's an easy target. I mean, people are walking by, they see them in there. Like, aren't they like, what are you guys doing? I know, and CT and Kevin, I think they walk by and they start talking about how they're going to have a book club. Like, that seemed like, when do you have time to do a book club on the traders? Like, that sounded like CT's kind of, he, he knows what's going on there. I know, but it also it's a lot of editing. They could have walked by earlier and said yeah. that, and they're like, oh, we'll stick this there. We'll put that there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really interesting. They have to get this chalice. Someone has to drink out of the chalice uh, before midnight. Did they mention at any point, I don't think I caught them saying if they aren't able to murder someone that they have some kind of penalty. No, they never said. And I was like, okay, what if they can't do this? Or what if it's so obvious that I, I don't, did they say somebody had to drink out of it or just touch it? I think someone had to, oh yeah, I think someone had to touch it. That's right. Just yeah. touch it. So I'm like, this is interesting. And then part of like, oh, this is right up my alley. I mean, I want to see how she does this one. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be really interesting. So they had yes, three targets in three targets in mind. Uh John, who's the politician, MJ, and then uh Sharia. I think that's how you say her name. Sharia? Sharia. Sharia, I think. Sharia. Sharia. Yeah. So So all right. It'll be really interesting to see. We it's uh getting really tense. Um, any predictions moving into episode four? Is there anything else that you want to touch on from this uh premiere that we didn't get to? No, so much. There's so much. It's uh, it, I think it's going to start to get really good. Um, I think episode four is going to be really good, really, really good. All right. Well, I can't wait to see it. So we're gonna we're gonna come back here in a little bit, and we'll give you. A, we're gonna watch it right now. We'll come back. That's why we'll be wearing the same clothes in our episode four preview, or, or sorry, recap. I should say. Uh, cause we got the screeners here. Uh, so thank you. Shout out to Peacock that makes our jobs a lot easier so That's that we right. can, uh, record these back to back, make this a little easier on us. But, um, lastly, so do you think, or do you think they're going to be able to pull this thing off? Are they going to be able to do it? I don't know. I mean, this is a pretty ballsy task they have to pull off and they're in a time crunch. So it's, it, I like it because it's just really starting to heat up. So it sucks for the four people that have gone, especially bananas, because they don't get to be a part of this. Because now it's starting to get really good. It's, so. It seems like it's getting better by the episode. So can't wait to watch episode Definitely. four. I'm Jack Vita. She's Stephanie LaGrosa Kendrick. Stephanie, you want to throw out your social media handles? Uh, follow me on Instagram. Steph, LaGro Steph underscore LaGrosa underscore Kendrick. And from there, you can find me on Facebook and all the other things. That's all on Instagram. Thanks. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, we'll be back next week or probably in a few days because we're tape releasing this a little late. But we'll have an episode four 
uh, recap out soon. And then make sure you guys, if you guys like this, subscribe to the Jack Vita show because we'll be doing this all season long. It's going to be a lot of fun. We might be able to bring on some of our friends from the traders as some guests. Who knows who will make an appearance? We'll keep you guys posted on that. That's and then right. if you uh, want to check it out, I'm doing a lot of sports interviews, a lot of minor league baseball players, some uh, major league players. Um, you can guys all, all the way up through spring training. So lots of sports content here on this YouTube channel, subscribe to the Jack Vita show on Apple podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever it is that you get your podcasts and you can follow me on social media at Jack Vita show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. She is Stephanie LaGrosa Kendrick. We'll be back soon until next time. I'm Jack Vita bringing the dance to the lobsters. <laughs>